the number one vitamin deficiency in high blood pressure, aka hypertension, is what we're going to talk about. This is not just for high blood pressure, it's for anything related to the arteries. Plaque in the arteries, calcium in the arteries, this information is so vitally important. Your doctors will not tell you this because they're simply not trained, despite massive evidence. If you have high blood pressure, the doctors should always check for vitamin D levels. Vitamin D is the most important vitamin for the inside of the artery, yet it's completely ignored. A person instead is put on medication. I mean, if you look up the actual cause of hypertension, 90% of it, it's called essential. What does that mean? It means unknown cause. And I'm going to be bold and tell you that that essential hypertension is a vitamin D deficiency. If we take a look at an artery, you have a very thin single cell layer of tissue called the endothelial layer. That is inside the artery, just constantly reacting with things that are in the artery itself. Whether there's too much sugar or junk food or whatever, that little layer is going to respond and do something. And if a person is deficient in vitamin D, they lose massive protection against that little layer of cells. And now the person is very susceptible to the start of many problems. You have to realize that vitamin D is one of the most potent natural substances in existence. There is one study that I found that evaluated over a thousand different compounds to see which one most potently affected this endothelial layer. And guess what? It was vitamin D. And you're about to learn why vitamin D is so important. Number one, it's a potent anti-inflammatory. Number two, it's a potent antioxidant. And number three, it directly increases something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is something that keeps the arteries in a state of vasodilation and relaxation. When you don't have enough nitric oxide, the artery starts getting tight and your blood pressure starts going up. But just think about nitric oxide as something that lowers blood pressure. When that little layer, the endothelial layer becomes dysfunctional, you don't produce nitric oxide anymore. The whole thing is controlled by vitamin D. Vitamin D helps increase calcium absorption in the intestine by 20 times so it can support your bone health. The calcium has another very important purpose in the body of providing communication signaling between cells. This is why the body has all these different systems to keep calcium very regulated and keep it in the blood at all costs. Our bodies are not stupid. It doesn't just have vitamin D as the only thing that controls calcium in the bone or in the blood. What happens if you don't have enough vitamin D to calcium in the blood? You might absorb some of the calcium from the food you eat, but not very much. When you have low vitamin D, you're going to also have low amounts of calcium, and your body does not like that, but has a plan B. I got to bring up something new that a lot of people don't know about, but it's something called the parathyroid. There's four glands that are on your thyroid gland. Parathyroid hormone is a backup to vitamin D. If you're low in vitamin D, the parathyroid hormone is going to increase and grab calcium from your bone and put it into your blood to make sure that there's always calcium in the blood. What happens if you're chronically low in vitamin D like the majority of the population, you're going to get a dysfunction of the parathyroid hormone. It's robbing a lot of calcium from that bone and creating osteoporosis, which is a lack of certain minerals in the bone. And now the bone is going to be very porous. It's going to have holes in it. But at the same time, you're going to have a lot of calcification in the arteries, in the soft tissue, all because the parathyroid hormone is working like crazy in excess. They call this a secondary hyperparathyroidism, excess secretion of the parathyroid hormone by the parathyroid gland in response to low calcium. Your joints are filling up with this calcium. Other causes can stem from a vitamin D deficiency. Low vitamin D causes low calcium and causes the parathyroid to co haywire. Why am I making such a big deal about this point? Because most doctors are afraid of vitamin D because they think if you give too much vitamin D to a person, it's going to develop a toxic effect. This is another confusion. First of all, I haven't found any type of clinical data to show that's true. I've talked to Professor 
Bruce Hollis, who's the pioneer in vitamin D research. And he told me that he's never seen a case where vitamin D in higher amounts caused this toxic hypercalcemia effect. But a chronic vitamin D deficiency causing this calcium problem is way, way more common. And that's what we should be focusing on. Plus, if we add this additional data of adding vitamin K2 to help mobilize calcium from the arteries, and more importantly, adding magnesium when we take vitamin D3, because magnesium is literally the regulator of this excess calcium. Magnesium alone prevents so many cardiovascular problems. Magnesium removes excessive calcium to allow the normal contraction relaxation and your arteries have contractile tissue and they're able to relax as well. I want to circle back to this vitamin K2 for a second because vitamin K2 actually helps remove calcium from the arteries as well. Then removes the calcium and puts it deep into the teeth, into the bone. It makes the bones really, really solid. But you better take vitamin D with K2. Why? If someone is chronically low in vitamin D3, what's going to happen is the arteries are going to be more susceptible to inflammation, plaque hardening of the arteries. And I'm not even talking about the arteries of the heart. I'm talking about peripheral arteries through the entire body. That's one of the biggest risks for amputation of the lower part of your extremities, your feet. Vitamin D can potently protect the arteries. They'll help the arteries become less inflamed. They will support the vascular cells for nitric oxide. Combined with vitamin K2 and magnesium, you can really keep that calcium from developing in the wrong place, the soft tissues. If I personally had high blood pressure, I would be taking 30,000 IUs of vitamin D3 every single day. The best source of vitamin D is the sun, but of course it's hard to get enough sun. In the summer, when you can get sun, Make sure a good part of your body is exposed to sun. About 40 minutes in the sun will give you 20,000 IUs of vitamin D3, which is not a significant amount if you look at the toxicity of just that sun exposure, because even some lifeguards that are exposed to the sun, they'll get about 100,000 IUs of vitamin D3 in a given day. The whole point is to get as much sun as you can without burning yourself, get slightly pink and then come out of the sun so you can develop a tan. But that regular exposure is really, really important, especially in preventing high blood pressure. If you already have high blood pressure, you should try the combination of vitamin D3 with the magnesium and K2 and just see what happens. Check with your doctor before implementing anything that I have to say because I'm not trying to bypass your doctor. I'm just trying to educate you on some additional things that I think are really, really important. Thanks for watching. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof your immune system. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before